I am me, son. Real, real niggas on deck. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by A.O. Conseco. Bitch. Nigga, I cut so motherfucking far off the motherfucking peel. How in the fuck do I got so much goddamn pink on my goddamn watermelon, man? This is some bullshit, man. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. I'm El Conseco, Philly Leader, AO Nation, and a Man 2 movement, which we got a lot to talk about on that. If you have not seen a future video of Dennis Rob, Dennis Robin, the Marcus Cousin video, the, the Mobile Nathan, um, get to the Patreon. I can't be packing the damn channel down too much shit. Y'all gotta get to that fucking Patreon. That way it's going down anyway. But this is a hindsight. All right, so. Frick Montana, it seemed like, I'm going to tell you what the story appeared to me. It feel like, so he was at date party, some bullshit. That shit tastes like a cucumber. The watermelon and the cucumber have to be kin. That's what the fuck it tastes like. I'm going to put some damn vinegar on that motherfucker. Nigga put some vinegar on the white side of the guy, the white fucking piece of the fucking watermelon. Have something to eat, man. But, uh, Fred Montana at day party and, um, some no fucking body reaches over and try to, you know what I'm saying, get his, you know, his, his time for fame. Or maybe that's his time for get back. Um, we can go into speculation about why the fuck this happened to um, French Montana, or we can go into what the true issue is, something that can help all of us and all the people trying to get into this music shit, um, which would be what French Montana was mad at, which is security. Uh, get my drink. Honestly, I don't like the imagery of French Montana as, as light as he is pushing on that big black man. I don't like the way that look. Be security, nigga. Be security. Which is real shit, though. I'm, I'm, let's be honest, though. Real talk. Fuck all that dumb ass shit, nigga. Look. Why the fuck is anybody getting anywhere near close enough to do anything to me, my nigga? Why the fuck? Nigga, I'm French Montana, I'm not motherfucking Drake. Nigga, we look the same. Nigga, I ain't sound like that motherfucker. This money I'm paying you every fucking time I go out, this shit ain't coming that easy. Nobody ain't talking about the Coke boys. I'm trying. I'm hoping that when Max B get out, you know what I'm saying, we make something happen. I'm hoping he ain't fucking fail the fuck off, nigga. So this money I'm paying you is motherfucking essential. And you telling me I'm reaching all this deep in my fucking pocket to pay you and I'm still motherfucking being assaulted? And then, you know, after that shit happened, after that shit happened, here come. Some nigga behind them walking and shit. Talking about some high me son playing around and shit like that. Nigga, 
and, it, and it's so fucked up because niggas be playing with you and shit like that. Motherfuckers be playing with you. And if he wouldn't have responded like that, the nigga would have kept on talking. He would have kept on fucking talking. So it's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do right now. Because, nigga, you behind me fucking really trolling me. So I was like, oh, man, shit, you should, can hide me, man. Security got to be better. And like, what you think this is a joke, nigga? I'm real deal going broke. I re and, and it just went down in this bitch. So what happened, what supposedly happened was uh, some, whoever the fuck, tried to hit, uh, um, I almost said chinks, tried to hit Fresh Montana, and then uh, they, did, they didn't hit him, but they almost got close enough to do it. Then, you know, say, uh, Fresh Montana home was a, a brawl started. So that would mean that whoever swung, might have been a somebody, might not have just been a crazed fan. Ain't no telling, but that's that's that don't matter. What matters is as an artist, this goes all around the board. All around the board, when you become a rapper, you get a target on your back. This is what the rap trap is. Once you become successful, once you enter the rap arena, you're successful. Big target on your back. Everyone has a reason to do something to you um, in life and in death. A person can get, if, nigga, you have what they need. I think, um, who are the academics, um, said, call them uh, clout tokens, or whoever said clout tokens first. Uh, they trying to get them shits from you. You got them. I can get clout off doing something to you. I need that. Um, not to mention whatever hood shit you may have going on. French Montana has had death around him. You know what I'm saying? So, you have to assume that, nigga, it's danger around this motherfucker. Um, and if you don't have enemies, which everyone does, as soon as you come, become successful, you have enemies now because there are, are enemies of success itself. It doesn't matter who's wearing success. As soon as you put it on, you have an enemy. Somebody's gonna find a fuck. I told you before, a nigga will find a million and one reasons to do something to you when you become successful. Um, so this is why I believe that it is a it's a smart investment to hire professional security at this point because at that time you can at least cross out one of your enemies, which is the police. Uh. They, they'll hit you for, you know, felon carrying a firearm, illegal firearm, just whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Just you being a black man with a fucking weapon is a fucking issue. Um, nigga, if, if a white man goes somewhere and kills somebody, oh, he's a hero. If you go somewhere and do the same fucking thing, like, oh, we'll hold on. We'll, we'll, he, we need to find out the information on this case. So you got to sit in fucking jail. They charge you. But the white man, he get called a hero, get news coverage and everything. Nigga got to sit in jail until they figure everything out. So you take your enemy off the board by saying, you know what? I'm a high professional security. You know, and, and the, the more money you have, which I don't really, to be honest, I mean, I guess you need the big niggas in clubs where they don't allow firearms. But if you just want, you know what I'm saying, personal security and shit like that, all you need is a nigga with a goddamn, you know what I'm saying? A, 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 a nigga, just one of your homeboys who ain't got no felonies. Get him a fucking concealed carry. Nigga, I'm a security guard, nigga. I'm a security guard. Anything move, I'm on that shit. But in a club situation, you do need somebody who can move a crowd. You know what I'm saying? Most niggas in the club ain't, you know what I'm saying, ex-football players, you know what I'm saying, um, bodybuilders. So you want that, you know what I mean? And that's who was in this video. And so what must have happened was it was just the fact, and I'd be mad as fuck too, because uh, shout out to E.T. Washington and, and Bougie Snacks. Um, definitely go check that shit out. You, of course, I'm three of S's, so I don't fuck with that. Um, actually, to be honest, if if I wanted to go out and maybe take a sip of, it's all about moderation, but that's something different. If I wanted to go out and take a, a sip of something, I, I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, you know, it's about celebration, it's, uh, you know, a, a socially drink or some shit like that, but as far as, you know when you fucking up, um, as far as sobriety goes, um, 
the three S's is really for drugs and alcoholics. If you're not an alcoholic, but that's Dave. But and if you're an alcoholic, don't use that. Like oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just drinking socially, nigga. I'm just always around motherfuckers, so shit. I'm social. Come on, my nigga. Stop trying to beat the system. But uh, ET told me that I need go a fucking feeling. Um. With being out to be going all these places, I need to um, fuck with security and shit like that. He gave me a couple places locally that I can fuck with, and I said, and I said it wouldn't be so much for me. I ain't gonna say that, but I, I definitely want security because I don't want nobody taking no your fuck. And I want I want a security guard who gonna burn something. To be honest, I really want a security guard who gonna burn something. If you fuck with me with what I'm representing, I really want a nigga who gonna down something, to be honest. But this is what every, every uh, successful person has to deal with. People who are enemies of success, they see you coming, and if you in, in the, the longer you stay in a fucking club, the longer you stay in a fucking club, motherfuckers are getting more and more drinks, they're getting more and more fucking brave, more and more fucking obnoxious. I'm finna go say something to him. That's the beginning of the night. I'm finna say something to this motherfucker. Man, this nigga ain't said shit to me yet. I know I'm finna got... Like, what the fuck? Nigga, you have a conversation with yourself because I'm the only thing in here for you to look at. That's why, as a celebrity, you want to just come in the club uh, and get the fuck out of there because it's like, the longer I stay here, the more I'm prone to some crazy shit happening. These motherfuckers... I'm just coming to these folks' time. They ain't got shit up going on. I'm the only thing in here that's, this doesn't happen every day. So, of course, I, you need security, and of course, you don't want to be there long because it's just, a motherfucker set the shit off just because there's nothing else to do. And you're putting yourself in that fucking environment when you do a certain type of music. So, security issues is definitely a part of the fucking rap trap. As we saw with Future, and them boys in fucking uh, UK, whatever the fuck like that, that knocked out his security guard and shit like that. And he dipped on his security guard. And it's like, that bond, I know that from the way uh, French Montana pushed the security guard, I can tell they have somewhat of a relationship with each other. Um... Because it like maybe the security guard betrayed his trust by allowing someone to get that close. It's like, nigga, you around even when you know what I'm saying. I don't need no security. You just always around and shit like that. Maybe we pass blunts around, whatever the fuck. How in the fuck you let this shit? So I really feel like you my homeboy, nigga. Really, I put you on on some shit. Maybe you know uh, when you need a little, I, I shoot you some, whatever like that. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm, I'm showing you real love, and, and you now, around this bitch, acting like you, oh, sh you being cautious and shit like that. Like no, nah, my nigga, when you became a security guard, you laid down your life right then. Period. Hey yo, what it do, man? It's your man, Ayo Conseco. I'm tuning in with the Big Face Podcast. One. I can't do it. I can't do it. That just ain't my style, dawg. I just, I just gotta keep it real. Look, dawg, let me holler at y'all. Look, I don't put that Patreon, them numbers for the Patreon. That's for AO Nation. If you're in AO Nation, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put all the videos. They won't be listed on YouTube. So, if you want all the videos and shit like that, you need to be a Patreon. If you want to contribute to the conversation that we have every Monday night, we go live on the Big Face Podcast YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to contribute to that conversation, have the call in number to where you can call in at any fucking time during those lives, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put those Patreon numbers in the men two numbers at the beginning of the show just so you can hear Winning Streak. As a matter of fact, if you want the whole Winning Streak single, all you have to do is send $2 to the Cash App or the PayPal. Um, and I'll send the song to whatever email is attached to your PayPal and Cash App. It's not that fucking hard. Um, but the Patreon is for AO Nation. I expect for y'all to fuck with that. Um, and before y'all start asking, this hat is not for sale. 
Um, the markup on it is too high. I was just trying to see what that shit looked like for real. The markup is too high right now, so I have to sell that shit for like thirty dollars, and I'm not prepared to say that to y'all. Um, so right now we just have the men two t-shirts for twenty. Uh, Big Face Podcast. We have the new Navy Blue Big Face Podcast uh, t-shirt. Uh, fifteen. Everything is fifteen, but the men two t-shirt. Then you got the Big Face Podcast Scully for uh, ten dollars deal. Go to PayPal.me forward slash Are You Serious Ten and put all your information in, motherfucker. Um, I salute everybody, all of my niggas, all of the men two, men two, men two members, AO Nation members that have been donating to the show. As you know, I'm a nigga on YouTube, so it is what it is. So when you contribute, it's a big deal to me. Um, but don't go crazy. Uh, but every uh, third Sunday, we do the AO Nation donation conversation where I shout out everybody who showed love. Uh, within that period and shit like that. If you don't want to be mentioned during that show, all you have to do is put no mention and you won't be mentioned. Um, but I really do appreciate everybody who shows love every third Sunday. It seemed like my message has went out there to where people know if you're a small business, you gotta have at least $100 for promotion. Uh, if you're an artist, you need to have at least $200 for promotion. Other than that, just leave me alone. I do this shit by myself, but I salute everybody for really giving me my time, giving my space to do what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. So I salute you. you want to go to work? Let's go to work. If IG sponsorship shit is not doing shit for you, and you know that. So handle your fucking business. Holler at me. Let's get some shit done. I'll see you on the man. Get the shit together, be home. Listen to me now. When you become Secret Service, you, you take an oath. They take a fucking oath. The motherfuckers that... It's, it's different branches of the Secret Service, but the branch that... I know <laughs> the branch that um protects the president. They have to take an oath that they will, in fact, step in front of a fucking speeding bullet. This is what security. You don't just secu you protect me from any fucking harm. I'm paying you for your body. I'm paying you for your life. Your life is worth whatever hourly rate you charge. And if and please, as a security guard, understand, I am expecting for you to, if it comes down to it, cover me with your body to shield me from bullets. You can play all the fuck you want as a security guard and think, oh, no, nah, they with my, no, nah, me and my, me and my client, we got a whole different relationship. Listen to me. They feel like you're my security guard. If it comes down to it and niggas start shooting, you protect me at all fucking cost. Ain't no swiveling and swinging. And, no, if it come down to it, you're supposed to be like Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington, Lord help me. You're supposed to be like Kevin Spacey on fucking Bodyguard and protect me like I'm Whitney fucking Houston. I'm paying you for your life. You get paid a honest wage for your life and your body. And if you don't agree to that, and if you don't think it's like that and you don't agree to that, tell your tell your client, hey, um, I, I'm going to protect you and everything like that, but if it comes down to it, I ain't going to protect you with my life. You know, like, if they start shooting, I ain't going to shield you with my body. Like, I'll push you out the way but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna sacrifice my life for yours. Tell a fucking, if, if, that, if, if, if that's what the fuck it is, tell a client that. Tell a client that, as, uh, shit, uh, look, look, bro, I'm gonna do like, nigga, walk through, I'm gonna push folks out the way, I'm gonna make sure everybody respect you, any nigga get out of line, I'm gonna swing on them, you know what I'm saying, and I gotta conceal care, so I'll bust that nigga and everything, but, um, yeah, let me holler at you. Let me holler at you over here. Look, bro. Um, I can't, I, I got kids. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm actually just doing this to try to get through school for real. Uh, yeah, I, I want to um, try to be a technology specialist. Computer, you know, computer science. Yeah, so, um, I ain't going to be able to um, do that whole sacrifice and that, and that body shield thing. Um, I know I got a vest on and everything, but it's just... You know these motherfuckers. It's man-made, man. You know anything man-made is, is is bound to fail. So um, 
I don't know exactly what kind of security guard you looking for, but uh, I'm not the sacrifice my life for my client type of security guard. So uh, uh, if you want one of those, I can point you towards a couple of smokers, but I'm not sacrificing my life for yours. We good. Do that. Tell a nigga up front that you ain't gonna do it. Because so many times we look at security guards as if they're just pieces of fucking metal. You know what I'm saying? Just be a shield, nigga. Just be my fucking shield. It's like, nah, these are fucking humans. You know what I'm saying? It's like we look at fucking soldiers in the military. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, fuck. You know what I mean? Whatever the fuck. We don't give a fuck. But, and so as a security guard, why would you think that the most inconsiderate people on the planet, celebrities, wouldn't expect for you to sacrifice your meaning, meaningless life for theirs. You think a fucking celebrity wouldn't sacrifice your life for theirs? You think you, you think that's not what they expect for you to do? And that's that whole thing where we're gonna be telepathic. I know what you want. Uh, I'm pretty sure you don't want me to die for you, so it's all good. And he thinking, I'm pretty sure you're going to die for me. It's all good. So now we walk out here like we're on the same page and we on whole two, two different fucking classrooms. You know what I'm saying? So we got to talk. We got to communicate. So this was an example of a miscommunication. Um, this security guard got too fucking laxed. He got too laxed. French Montana, everybody fuck with French Montana, it's all good, it's all love. So they rocked him to sleep. It ain't been it ain't been no shit in so long to where security guard just go and, and pretty much pick up a free check. Mo 99% of the time a security guard is not going to have to, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna be in the situation that future bodyguard was in. That's why he was so ready to go. He's expecting for motherfuckers to run away as soon as he walk up. This his his stature. Alone make niggas run away. Them UK niggas, that's all they can do. They don't got no guns. They can't do nothing but fight. They own that. You know what I'm saying? So, believe me, it's a lot of security guards who, this all they got. This all they got. And 99% of the time, this is all you need. This is all you need. As long as you look like this, niggas standing the fuck down. Oh, this fuck ass nigga got that security bitch ass nigga. Come down and be with our security fuck nigga. Shit. Shit, I ain't gonna go to jail for goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Burn no goddamn security, bro. Shit. I wish a motherfucker would, bro. All right, beat them security ass as they walking away. You know what I'm saying? So, what happened was the security guard got too fucking lax. Just like most security guards get because don't shit happen because they stature scare more. They scarecrows. Pretty much. So, um, you sitting in the club, probably passing the weed round, drinking good, maybe talking to a, a, a bitch or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Just in a lap of luxury. And a nigga snuck his ass up, step by step, or whatever, and got on one end, but still missed and shit like that. But it was just the fact of it. And I, like I said, I understand that line of thinking. How in the fuck? Because at the end of the day, my nigga, if it was all love, I wouldn't have to pay you to secure my person. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I wanted a nigga who gonna just chill sometime and be on point sometime and did do this sometime, I would've just let my home, I would give my homeboy a couple of dollars and let him be my security. I, I fucking bought professional security. I want professional securing. So that's what you seen when French Montana pushed the nigga like, nigga! And uh, that so many times, we don't know the flaws in our circle until the flood hit. We don't know that we got holes in our motherfucking ship until we got to put that bitch on the water. That's not the right time to know that. So what you need to do is, like I said before, mock training, mock training, mock training. This is why I'm on this motherfucking, you know, 
uh, this mission to go ahead and, and get my wind up, lose some weight, and get ready to go out here in October. Because I did mock training and I wasn't prepared. You have to practice shit. You have to practice. If you don't practice, when you go out there and do that shit, you wait till the day of to do the shit, my nigga, please. You gonna find out there's so many, that's like, that's what sound check is for. Like, let me make sure my goddamn mic is gonna be on, make sure the band gonna be on. You know what I'm saying? Everything is that. If you wait till the fucking day of, if there is any holdups, you can't fix them. You gotta go out here and do our best. Fuck that. I want a goddamn security guard that fucking at least three times a week we do goddamn um random fucking testing. Where's goddamn we got an intruder in the house? You know what I'm saying? Uh Alpha Delta dipset. You know what I'm saying? Alpha Omega Charlie. You know what I'm saying? Get me to the fucking car. I don't want to fucking practice this shit when a, a nigga kick the door in or when a nigga start shooting at the club. Oh, nigga, where we supposed to go? I, I don't know, nigga, shit, nigga. What the, what the fuck the security at? That nigga ran on soon the goddamn first shot game. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. No, you can't do that. So you got to practice this shit, man. And like I said, it's that dope, man. It's that dope. And so many of us die because we don't want to put the work in that it takes to be successful. We, we, we sloppy successful. See, sloppily successful. Knowing that success itself can get you killed, we still remain to be sloppily successful. I'm successful, but I'm not operating in that um we we on point every time we on point we on point that could have been my life this nigga didn't got close enough to where he could have snubbed me what the fuck is to say that the security went maybe he cool security you know what i'm saying and he don't want that they land the club with the fire this nigga done fucking killed the shit out of me and just like every other nigga that get killed nobody say shit about security nobody don't know security all we know is oh man um Young greatness died. Oh man, XXX temptation died. And you know, of course, these situations where, you know, but you understand what I'm saying? See, we understand that rappers are being hunted like um, activists. Um, if you don't know what, uh, uh, Blue Tabs, uh, 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 White Willow Kush. Um, you can tell I don't know weed for real. Uh, that pink coke, you know what I'm saying? Yellow dope, um, white heroin. You know what I'm saying? It's being hunted out this motherfucker, man. Like everybody want to find a rapper, and just seeing you was like, man, there you go. That's when Rico Rickles went to the store. He just went to the store. Same thing with um uh, Lil Zan. Just being out in public is like, oh, what's up, man? Oh, I should do something to him. Yeah, hey, I should do something, man. Fuck that nigga, bro. He was online talking that shit. Who was talking about? Shit. I'm, man, that nigga was talking down on us. What? Oh, man. What? So it's just, it's a thing. It's, there's, no one ever comes here. Like, nigga, we don't really see celebrities like that, man. Like, so shit. We don't know this nigga neither. And fuck that shit, bro. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna strike this fuck nigga. I'm finna gonna strike this fuck nigga, bro. Man, fuck that shit. I'm finna strike this fuck nigga, bro. Fuck that shit, bro. That nigga goddamn online talking that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? And you have to know that is a nigga mindset. But you wouldn't know that if you've never been out there with them retarded niggas, with the fucking wolves out there. Not even the wolves. The wolves are coming to get something from you. These are the hyenas. They just want to do something. You know what I'm saying? So... That's why it would be smart, as, especially as a felon, like, let me get me some real security so whatever happened, it's on them. And with my security, I'm going to test this nigga. I'm going to find a way to test this nigga and make sure that this is my dude. Not to say that you can test a security guard and 
he fell when it really happens, but you can see what he's on. See what this nigga is on. Dog, at, at this point in time in the industry in 2019, dog, you damn near have to take a security guard through the same things that you would take a girl that you're dating. It's a relationship. You have to see if you guys are, are fit. What time does he get up? Is like, is this your guy? Like, you know what I'm saying? Does he fuck with you for real? How does he feel about your music? Um, you know, what's his record like? You, you just see what the fuck is up with this nigga. Or you gonna be in a situation where maybe the nigga that come close to you won't be just trying to snuff you. Nigga be trying to murder you. And nobody's gonna blame the fucking security. Because at the end of the day, security are human beings too. Like, you, shit, why, why, what the fuck happened, bro? Shit. I ain't have a file on me, bro. Shit, what you want me to sacrifice my life, bro? He more important than me, bro, because I'm a security guard, bro? Man, fuck that, bro. That, that was fucking wrong with y'all, bro. Y'all think goddamn security did pull the goddamn this. Lay our life on the line because we, because I ain't got enough money he got, so I'm supposed to sacrifice my life. So me in the grave is better than him in the grave. All right, bro. I, I feel you, bro. I ain't saying I ain't. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't expect anybody to lay their life down for you, not even your parents. But as a security guard, you do need to understand that it's kind of what niggas is paying you for. Niggas ain't just paying you to push people and tell people you don't want no pictures taken. Niggas is paying you to secure them in any way possible so maybe we need to have a deeper conversation about security guards what the duty of security guards are and because in 2019 if you walking around here and you're successful and you don't have a security guard whatever happened to you we can't even we can't even really like Motherfuckers tell me all the time, you can't change the world, uh, me and two, and, uh, you can't change, nah, and all that bullshit. So, automatically, when, if we tell my rapper though, it's like, why would people even want to fucking hurt a rapper? Why would, why, why, what, how does that make sense? That's the way of the fucking world. That's the way of the world. So, deal with that too. So, that's what that is, man. Um, I hope that, uh, uh, Frank Montana and his security guard get it together. Um, hate to say it, but until motherfuckers listen, cause when I tell motherfuckers about a 30 day crime fast, they laugh at me. But then when I talk about the rapper that died, a rapper got hurt, a rapper people got killed, oh man, it's too soon to be talking about that. Oh man, well you don't even know the fucking story. Fuck the story, nigga. You're a fuck about the story. Another fucking rapper died. Part of the rap trap. How the fuck you gonna laugh at me when I say a 30 day crime fast, but then when I talk about what happened, a byproduct of no crime fast, nah oh, man, it's too fucking early, man. You don't even know what the fuck. I don't give a fuck what happened, nigga. Niggas ain't listening, so niggas is dead. And we gonna keep coming back to this same fucking place until we get an understanding until we can change this fucking mindset of people being enemies of success. If you feel like that's never going to end, then nigga, this rap trap shit is a fucking gold mine. Because I'm never going to get to stop. Make sure you go to the fucking PayPal to cash out. And make sure you go to the Patreon. We got a lot of shit coming on there, bitch. With Future and DeMarcus Cousins. I'll see you all in a minute. Love, love.